بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم brothers and sisters and welcome to our series glimpses into the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is part number three and as we've said before these are short glimpses short snippets from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we said before we go into the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam section by section we said we will give a glimpse into his character into his qualities because as we know my dear brothers and sisters he is the best from all humans he is the greatest man to set a foot on this earth all attributes of perfection in terms of manners speech and all the best of etiquettes are all found in the prophet sallam and allah said about him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim Verily, O Muhammad, are on the highest standard of character. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I have been sent to perfect righteous manners, the best morals. It is all found in the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as Muslims, we don't have to look far. We have the greatest example in the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Uswatun Hasana. Verily, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best of examples, the best of role models. So, all Muslims, their role model, their example in how to worship Allah, in how to have manners, and how to get closer to Allah is that of the Prophet Muhammad. Everything that we need to get closer to Allah, He showed us. And everything we need. To keep away from, he showed us that as well. He told us, he informed us what to keep away from. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu he said, I have left you with two things. If you grab onto them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my sunnah. And my sunnah. The Quran and sunnah. This is our guide in darkness. We ask Allah to make us from those who grab firmly onto these, onto the Quran and sunnah. To continue with our look into the life of the Prophet ﷺ from some of his attributes, some of his qualities, the Prophet ﷺ, he was generous at heart. He was open-handed, spending in charity day and night and depending on Allah to provide a replacement. He never rejected anyone who ever asked him for anything. He وسلم, never rejected anyone who asked him from the things of this world. He gave them if he had sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he وسلم, has told us and informed us that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. Giving is better than taking. And he also tells us in a hadith al-Qudsi where Allah says, spend O son of Adam and I will spend on you. So in Islam it is encouraged to give and spend and to be generous and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was described that he was the most generous of people. And he was even more generous in Ramadan when Jibreel would come to him and review the Qur'an with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as Muslims, we should take this example to be generous, to be open-handed, and we should keep far away from being misers or stingy. So he saw Salam, as we said, he never rejected anyone. He would give. If someone asked him and he had, he would give them. Anas said, radiallahu an, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was never asked for anything except that he gave it. Except that he gave it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw Salam, never worried about the affairs of this world or anything in it. His heart was attached to the next life. He turned away from this world. He turned his back to this world and he turned his attention to the hereafter. This is the Prophet ﷺ. He would say, what do I want from this world? I am to this world like a man who sat under the shade of a tree and then got up and left. This is how he treated this world. My dear brothers and sisters, the root of our problem today is we love this world. We are so attached to this world 
and we hate death. We hate to even think about death. We hate to think about the grave. We hate to think about the hereafter. We hate to think about judgment. Many people you say, you talk to them about death, death, not again. Isn't there anything else to talk about? So attaching ourselves to the hereafter is a must. Prophet ﷺ, he told us that we, there will come a stage where the nations will gather around us, will gather like they gather around a table to consume a meal. And the companions ask, is it because we are few that day? Prophet ﷺ said, no, you'll be, you'll be great in number, but you'll be like the foam of the sea. You'll be weak. And they asked, why a messenger of Allah? He said, al -wahm. He said, what is this? He said, loving this world and hating death. Loving this world and hating death. There's nothing wrong with having from the things of this world, but the problem is when this world turns you away from the Akhirah. When this world and all its possessions and its delights turns you away from religious commitment, turns you away from Islam, turns you away from prayer, turns you away from zakat, turns you away from obeying Allah and His Messenger. That's the problem. So, this world, all the materialistic things should be in our hands, not in our heart. What should be in our heart is Allah, the Quran, the Sunnah, Islam, the Akhirah. The Prophet wasallam, he was attached to the next life. And he did not let the struggles and tribulations and tests of this life affect him and keep him away from his main goal. Subhanallah, if you think about this, months would pass and no fire would be lit in his house. Nothing would be cooked with fire. Think about that. How would we be if that happened to us? He would sleep hungry night after night. His household the best of households, the best human being. Night after night he would sleep hungry, my dear brothers and sisters. His house, his house had no food. That's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So think about all the blessings that we have today. Are we thanking Allah for them? Whenever we have a blessing, we should thank Allah for them. Umar radiallahu anhu he said, I saw the messenger of Allah hungry once and he could not even find a date in his house to fill his stomach. One date. If you go to your pantry today at home, what do you have? All that you need. Probably last year a month or two, even longer. Open the fridge, everything you need. Subhanallah alazim. Prophet Sallallahu he would sleep hungry. He would not even find a date to eat in his own house. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to step out of his house, he used to leave his house due to the pains of hunger. He used to tie a large stone on his stomach in order to reduce the pains of hunger, my dear brothers and sisters. To reduce the stomach aches. The companions, radiallahu anhum, they would know about the hunger. They would know about his hunger from the change in the tone of his voice. Abu Talha, radiallahu anhu, he said, Whenever I heard a weakness in the voice of the Prophet, sallam, I would know that he was hungry. I would know that he was hungry. Aisha was asked, what did you live on most of the time? She said that Aswadain. If you want to translate that literally, it's the two black things. Referring to, who knows? Dates and water. Dates and water. So many days would pass and there'll be nothing in his house but water. Subhanallah al-Azim. A man came to the Messenger of Allah and said, I am hungry. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent after his wife to make something for this man. She said, by Allah, we only have water. He would then go to his second wife and his third wife. All of them would respond with the same reply. This is the Prophet ﷺ. Yet alone, yet despite all this, my dear brothers and sisters, he was the most complete in his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although he went through all these struggles, hunger, no food, he was complete in his fear of Allah. He feared Allah the most. He would sometimes, he would sometimes find a date in his bed 
or on his bed and he would say, if I was sure that it wasn't from charity, I would have eaten it. But this is his taqwa. Because he feared it may be from charity. And the Prophet ﷺ does not eat from charity. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our lesson for today. A short reminder about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my dear brothers, remember generosity. Always be like your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be generous. Don't wait for someone to ask you to be generous. Be generous at all times. And avoid as much as you can stinginess. Secondly, don't worry about this world. Attach yourself to the hereafter. Remember death constantly. Remember the delights of paradise and the punishment of hell. Because this life is temporary, my dear brothers and sisters. It is like a bridge that you go over to get to the next world. That's all it is. 60 or 70 years, as the Prophet ﷺ has told us. That's the average lifespan. So attach your heart to the hereafter. And also, don't worry too much about materialistic things. If you are tested with a bit of wealth, a bit of food, a bit of struggle, remember the Prophet ﷺ. Remember how he used to put up with it. Remember how patient he was. And did, this did not affect his taqwa. Because the most important thing is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fearing Allah, you being conscious of Allah, and you placing a barrier between yourself and the haram, doing all that Allah orders you to do and keeping away from what he prohibited. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al Bayan Radio, the voice of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah.